And, and it's important for us to capture this. God, God is accelerating things. The devil is accelerating things. Everything is becoming smaller and smaller in the world, the universe, the whole thing. And, and you're trying to hide more and more behind your little cedar fences. Man, that is so toothpicky. It just don't work, man. Goodness, get over that. We, we got to go out and attack. That's who we are. That's what we're called to do. Um, and I really do like it. Now, look over here in 1 Samuel, David and Goliath, you know, he comes out there. It, the disdain the devil has for us, because most Christians are fake anyway, and he knows that. The whole army of God was there. Their greatest king, the devil, already knows these things. We're the ones that's duped, not the demon. It's easy to deceive me, but you ain't going to deceive your enemy. And you ain't going to deceive God. I'm the only person you can deceive. Help yourself. Everybody does, and it's all right. I can make it. Don't worry. I can take it. And so they're going along, right? So then what I didn't talk about is uh, he, David was a covenant man. We need to be covenant people. So I make covenant with the people I work with or I don't work with them. And I don't break covenant. Other people do. In the last times, the Bible says in 1 Timothy and 1 Thessalonians that men will be covenant breakers. That's a bad deal. You don't want to be that. You want to be a covenant keeper. A person who walks in the entirety of the power of the anointing. And you get that through several ways. Uh, the anointing is the way you get it. But you get anointing by being loyal, being faithful, being disciplined, understanding the will and moves and what God wants to do. It, it seems complicated. It's not complicated. It's easy. You just obey and you'll be fine. And it don't matter how you look to other people. If you obey God, you will be fine. It's really true. See, one thing that got to me when I was in Africa, I was over there, and they brought me this little boy. I was in front of these famous people. They're the king. The, the, the president's uh, cabinet was all there. It was like 70% or 75% of them was all there, right, right on the first second rows. And all these bishops and cardinals and all these real famous people, and these, they're very, very, very important stuff. They got all pretty clothes and real pointed hats and funny stuff. And, and you can just look at them and tell they're important. And, you know, and they got these little pretty sticks and all got these little designs on them. You know, they walk around and they walk slow and, you know, and you look at them and you think, he's important, you know. And here's the deal. I'm sitting there. I mean, it's really funny to me. I, I don't understand why they want you to see that they're important. If you're important, you don't have to be seen that you're important. You do important stuff. And that's how people know you're important. Are y'all confused? But see, standing there, there's these 1,200 pastors in there, right? And all these important people on the first two or three rows. And, I'm, you know, I'm not liking it because I don't like that. But that's just who I am. I like to be around people that are non assuming that are barefooted, and they got raggedy clothes on, and they raise the dead. Now, that's what I like. So that's what I like. I like that. These guys, you would look at them, and you'd never choose them for anything. Ever. And God has chosen them. To confound me. Boy, they're just astounding folks. I, I like them so much. So anyway, so you got to be a covenant person. Because see, here we are, watch this. I'm talking, and, and right in the back I notice this fellow walks in with this little baby, and he's, he's all twisted up and everything, and moaning and groaning and carrying on. He ain't nothing like what I'm looking at right here in the front. And that guy stood back there for quite a while, because he knows, this guy knows, there's this cast order, there's this pecking order, there's this way of life that everybody in the whole world has except y'all. And y'all have it too, but you act like you don't. See? And, but outside of here, they live it. And so, you know, he's back there trying to decide whether he's going to break the rules or not. Because rules don't make allowances for him. He's in a, from the wrong tribe. He's the wrong type of people. He don't speak the right language. He ain't got any education. He's got uh, 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 AIDS. His whole house ain't got no food. It's made out of sticks, and at least a little wind will blow it down. So he, he has just not got nothing to stand on. What would bring him from the back of that crowd to bother me? 
Do you understand? And I'm standing and I'm watching him. I'm talking, but I'm watching him. And, I, and, I'm, and inside of me, th lots of things go on while I'm talking. And I'm sitting there going to the Holy Ghost. I need you to bring that fellow up here. I'm not going to invite him, but I need you to bring him. And so I'm standing there, and I walked over on this side going to the right. And whenever I looked back to my left, because I noticed it, so I stopped and looked over there. He started walking. And I looked at my son. And I just, my, because my men that work with me, they have to pay attention. Because all you get out of me most of the time is just a little click of my finger like that. And you better be paying attention. Otherwise, I'm coming down and get you by the shirt collar. <laughs> Serious. There's things that God wants to do that it ain't nobody else's business. Because they ain't interested anyway. They just want to look important. They don't want to do things that are important. It's too costly. Covenant is too costly. Mentoring people is too costly. Being a student is too costly. So that's not what we do anymore. We just learn a few verses, talk the right phrases, say the right words, dress the right dress, and we look like we're somebody. But when in actuality, when we go, go down and lay down and the demons come in at night, we understand that we're nobody. Till we wake up in the morning and put the clothes back on, then we think we're somebody again. It's true. You ever notice that? I have all over the world. I don't like it. I'm, a, I'm after it. I'm going to set a fire to it. Holy Ghost fire to it. Because there's a reason. Because down through every generation, there are people who know how to be faithful. There are people that know how to walk in covenant. There are people that know how to be loyal. There are people that know how to mentor. There are people that know how to be mentored. There are people that want to walk in the Holy Ghost. There are people that want to walk in double Holy Ghost. There are. There are. And they're, they're good people. And they're honest people. And we've got to find them, and we've got to hook ourselves to them, and we've got to make things work because we can. That's why. And so he walks up there, and I, I flicked my finger at my son, and he just stood up and looked around. He saw the guy. He intercepted him. Boom. He's over there talking to him, and I just keep on talking because these people are important. They want to hear something, so I've got to tell them something. And so... <clears throat> When my son, my son made a turn, see, he was there talking to the guy, and then he put the guy right behind him, and he's just looking at me. What that means for me is I don't have any more alternatives. He has used all the alternatives already that there was, if there was any. I've got to act. There ain't nothing else to say. I've got to get my hands on this invalid, crippled, dying child. That daddy's standing there looking at me, but right over my son's shoulder, big, tall, fine-looking, black as boy, he was black. Man, he was a handsome man. I, he just was born. He just didn't have the opportunities we have. And he, he, he's just got these big old tears running down his face. So as far as I'm concerned, all this pomp of the King Agrippa crowd is over. And Bernice, Bernice and King Agrippa and all them. <laughs> and so I walk over there. I just quit talking. There ain't no sense to talk. The talking is over. And my son looks at me, and he reaches and gets this kid. Now, this kid stinks. And he reaches and gets this kid, turns around with him, and he's just, you can't believe how many ways this little boy is twisted. And it's really a sad deal. His daddy believed what I said. <laughs> his daddy didn't care about his own diseases. He had three or four himself. And my son reached and handed me that child, and, and I took the child. Still ain't said nothing. 